Hey everybody, I'm Zelda Master and welcome back to The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. In this one, we're going to be taking on level 5, it being the Catfish's Maw. And, uh, wow, the music for this level is rather, uh, intimidating. And I'm not going to lie, this temple is much different than other ones, because the way you get the item of the dungeon is, well, you have to take it off of someone else as they beat you to it. Which I find really interesting, but okay, let's kill these enemies, enter into this room, and we can immediately get the compass, which will be necessary, as there are a lot of chests within this dungeon that you can just easily skip. They're not really that important, but um, we're mainly going to be using it for the keys and such. Let me just pick up this, enter here, where we got a nice 2D section. I absolutely love these. I feel like every time we come across one, I just have to gush over it, because I really wish Nintendo would actually, wait, let me jump over here. Nintendo would make something more of this, but okay, there we go, we managed to get to the other side. We're gonna have to do this again, though, so, uh, if that was somewhat difficult, it's not over yet. But okay, let's kill all of these enemies around. I like how they're different colors, and once we do that, we can pick up- Ooh, a piece of power, not really that necessary, actually. Because what we need to actually do is push these two blocks into each other, you know, complete the little square. And just like that, we got a small key. But now we actually have to backtrack. While this piece of power would have been amazing to have right here, as this is where you fight one of the mini bosses within this dungeon and get the item of the dungeon, we can't actually do that yet, as we have to lead this mini boss to this section. And I'm just excited to see how it ends up. But okay, let's run with our Super Saiyan godlike powers. <laughs> yeah, Link looks so awesome. I actually just have to like sit and admire it for a second. It actually looks kind of crazy uh, the way it covers him with red because I like the red tunic on him. I kind of want to see how it would look with the blue tunic when you get the defensive one as well. But okay, now we actually have to kill these enemies because we can't advance. And uh, while well, you have to hit their butts to, um, to, to kill them and it's kind of difficult sometimes if they're not going to like, you know, expose their butt to you, you can um, eventually get an item that will allow you to kill them much easier. And there we go. Now we got blue on red. I like it. But let's use a small key. Uh, we're going to be getting this item to kill these enemies much easier in a bit as we progress forward here. So, okay, I just believe you have to kill these enemies as well. I feel like with the red tunic, though, I, I don't really need any um, sword buffs. So, to me, this is really nice. But, okay, there you go. As you can tell with uh, how the... Whoa, he looks so awesome, actually. So, this is, I believe, Master Stalfos. But, yeah, this is one of the few boss battles you're going to have to do against him as... Whoa! He is um, going to teleport, or rather, he's going to be all around the dungeon. And the thing is, with him, and ooh, he's really easy to hit still. Um, you can see by this platform, this part is glowing. Each part glows differently. And, oh, he actually takes more hits than he did before. I love the way he looks, though. I I'm really glad they didn't make him look too cute. I mean, he's still kind of cute, but, you know... He still looks a bit intimidating as he was meant to in the original game. I'm really curious to see how the boss later within this dungeon, the actual boss, will look as well. Because he was terrifying. But, uh, I can't beat you. I'm out of here. And he jumps away. <laughs> and there you go. The door is open. But, yeah, the reason why this part is lit um, on this skull-like tile platform thing is because you're going to notice different sides of it will light up until um, you, you know, fight each one in each room. And then, obviously, the room we were... In previously where we got the small key is where we have to head back and fight him a final time because that's where all the tiles were lit so that's where it gets a bit confusing not exactly knowing what you need to do and where to find him because he may be in a room that was empty before but don't worry once you kill him every time needed uh, you'll get it in I've got what's inside this box come and get it if you can master yeah Stalfos I guess by the eye kind of indicates Stalfos but uh, okay nice we get bombs which is really helpful uh, especially to take on Master Stalfos. So I don't believe you don't have to really do anything within this section of the temple. I'm just going to go ahead and leave it. Uh, like I said, this temple can get confusing just because of the way it's structured. And even here, this is a bit interesting. So I believe we have to push this. And while we can head over, or we want to make our way over to the um, right, we have to first make our way to the left. Have this area reset. It's kind of interesting how this is the puzzle. Actually having areas reset by going in and out like this. And now we can actually press the switch, press or push this down, and we'll uh we'll be able to fight him a second time. And there you go, as you can see a second part 
of the skull is lit, letting you know that this is the next room. So I guess once you get this puzzle, you'll know that once all four or you have your fourth time, it will be the one in the room we were in at first. So, okay, you found me. You're a real pesky kid. You know that. All right, let's go ahead and do this again. Whoa. The way he winds up his attack looks terrifying. I don't even want to risk to see how much damage he would do. But, uh, again, yeah, I, I can't help but absolutely love his character design. His eyes kind of make me think of Spider-Man in a way, because they're just, like, so big. But, like, the eye sockets, rather. <laughs> okay, come on. Oh, okay, he's blocking pretty nicely. And, oh, he didn't do that much damage. Okay. Makes sense with how many times I have to fight him that he won't be, like, ridiculously hard or anything. But there we go. We have taken him out again. Ugh, I can't beat him out of here. So the same thing and just literally dip. Um, so I believe we only have one more time we have to take him on before we can head back to the, uh, you know, empty room and we'll actually see him. But okay, whoa. Don't want to mess with that. I believe I really don't want to mess with anything here. Uh, we'll be able to come back here and do a lot of things. But for now... We're just here to progress and try to get the item from a Master Stalfos. But, okay, uh, I believe the way to progress through this room is... Aha! There we go. You want to have this little guy... Come here. Come on. Okay, maybe the spin attack will work. No? Uh, we could probably push a block and then get to him. There we go. Come here. Yeah, you want to make sure you kill this enemy as you won't be able to progress to the next room. And wow, we wasted a lot of hearts trying to do so. But okay, there we go. So this is the second to last time. So, God, you found me. Okay, real pesky. Real, he just says the same thing. Would have been nice if they added different dialogue to him. Because, to me, he's such an interesting enemy. One that steals the hero's item and then battles him for it. More than once. He's, you know, he's persistent. And he puts on a decent battle. Like, he actually uses his sword and shield. We don't really need to use our uh, shield against him. But, okay. Can we hit him quick? No. Oh, I wonder if this bomb works. No. Okay. Good thing I got a lot of bombs, though. You want to make sure you have well over 10 to do this because, I mean, he takes three if you actually land each one in each battle. But, all right, he's out of here, and now we know what to do, and that is make our way all the way back to where we got the first small key. But there's more items we can be getting, and hearts, which I could totally use. I like how they locked the door here because now we have to just waste our time killing these enemies. But, okay, there we go. We got the dungeon map which isn't bad but uh now what i want to do is just kind of make my way all the way back and hopefully no more doors close on me i believe even if they would have in the original game they won't this time and don't worry all of these chests will be useful and we will get them just later uh okay i gotta be really careful because we're about to take on the final uh time against them and this music is so intense <laughs> It seems so intimidating for this dungeon. I feel like it should only be playing when we're against Master Stalfos. But, okay. Let's pick this up. Kind of, you know, get more bombs. We could use it. Because I don't believe he ever... It would be nice if he dropped a fairy maybe the last time we go up against him. But I don't think he will because, believe it or not, he's not the main mini-boss of the dungeon. He'll, he just gives us the item of the dungeon. But there's another new mini-boss that we're going to have to take on on top of it. Um... Okay, at least this room isn't forced to be open with. I legit feel like in the original game, every time you'd c come back to these rooms, you'd have to do them again and again, which would get annoying. But okay, back here, a little platforming with, you know, Link. Uh, kind of wait it out. That should be good enough. Uh, yep, perfect. And now let's go ahead and just ignore all of these guys. Head straight into this room. And we're going to get one of my favorite items in all of the series. And I'm really happy it's in this game. Okay, whoa. So yeah, this is where he's uh, a bit more aggressive. But regardless, you can just knock him down. <laughs> just like that. So, whoa. Avoid. Let's try to jump. Actually, I don't want him to be shielding. I need him to, like, wind up his attack. And then hit him. No? Okay. Let's, uh, let's actually get him away from the wall. There we go. If anything, him jumping exposes his back and makes it really easy to hit him. Let's see if we can get another quick swipe. There we go. So yeah, whether he's winding his sword or jumping towards you, it's the best time. And finally, after all of those explosions, so many bombs to the face, he's dead. 
Too bad he had no last words. And he drops the item that we wanted so bad, it being the hook shot. So yes, you got the hook shot. It stretches long when you use it. Okay, the chains. So now he can become Spider-Man. I, I don't know. I always think of Spider-Man when I use the hook shot in, in these games. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Like I said, it's one of my favorite items in the entire series because it just makes Link a freaking badass. Like, look at that. Uh, we can't use it in this room, though. But it's going to be very useful for uh, so many things within this temple, just like all the chests we've seen. Now I could pretty much just backtrack and pick up all of the chests, which uh, I guess I should do first. And speaking of which, there's actually a chest uh, near the entrance of the temple, just like that, that we couldn't do anything about, and now we can. So there we go. And while it does... Oh, wow, that's actually a silver rupee. That's really good. But while it does look like we're stuck... You actually can just hook shot on these as well because they're wooden. So anything wooden uh, is usually what you can hook shot on. I believe that's like how it's been in most Zelda games. Uh, or hook shot spots. So I think what I want to do is, yeah, first finish up this section within the temple as um, there is a bunch of chests we can get. And then we will start to make our way to a newer section uh, that I haven't shown off at all yet because it's kind of useless when you don't have the proper items. But okay. So, let's avoid these enemies, uh, and actually, this room, you didn't really need the hookshot for it, but it's very important, because without this room, you would not be able to actually take on the boss whatsoever, so, we can't use the hookshot. There are bloopers, though, pretty cool to see more Mario enemies, and a Goomba just kind of chilling. I don't really care for it, I need to swim past everything right now. <laughs> I like how he's just so happy walking back and forth. Uh, okay, but there we go. So this is where the new uh, hookshot mechanic comes in with the temple. You can draw bridges by pulling it down. For some reason, in the original game, I always imagined them being like stairs or something. Uh, or a ladder that you'd like pull somehow, it would like stretch. But, wow, well, the nightmare key looks uh, really nice. Never really paid too much attention to it. But, as I was saying, yeah. Uh, the way it looked in the original game was so much worse that I totally forgot I could use my sword. But you know what? Screw you bloopers. Yeah, g give me the hearts and let me use the little Mario, um, it's not really an Easter egg reference. I don't know. Like you get a heart only when you jump on a Goomba. So I'm assuming it's supposed to be like a small reference to Mario. Um, it only would make sense, you know, cause Link doesn't normally stomp on his enemies to get kill them but okay so i don't think there's anything important here but might as well check yeah this is where we killed the other enemy and you can just kind of backtrack but okay ooh, could use this for now or just mainly the look but i, I guess in reality it, it would have been much more useful to have the other piece okay let's just push this and now go upwards where we're gonna get so many rewards just for coming back here so want to jump like this hook shot here here is one easy chest that will give us 50 rupees and then, we can hook shot up here, pull this down, open up this chest, get ourselves another 50 rupees. And you think that's enough? Well, no. If you really decide to make your way around here, there is another stinking chest right here. Which gives us a key, and we actually need this, so never mind. This one isn't much of a reward as it is completely necessary to beat this dungeon. But okay, can we hook shot around? No. But you could do this. So pull this. Run around and then just kind of hook shot out of here like that. And the reason why I ignored uh, that um, room that has like the 2D section is because the that room just pretty much takes you to where we just got that small key. But you can't get the small key without the hook shot. And that's why that whole section is useless unless you want to backtrack through there, which I feel like it's much faster with what I just did. Because I would have came out of here and I feel like that would have taken much longer. So you can truly just ignore this section and you'll find another way around it. But okay. We still have yet to actually take on the other mini boss that I mentioned. And I'm not looking forward to that because from what I remember in the original game, it was absolutely annoying and it sucked. But l let's see. So now, as you can see, we really explored this part and all the way up here, but we haven't really gotten around here. And that's what we're going to be exploring. So all we have to do is head to the left, which I completely ignored because this is where I feel like the hook shot is very necessary. Not for these enemies, at least, but for everything else we want to collect. Uh, this room, I guess, not so much either. This actually just might be the beak room. Um, let's pick up these bombs, though. And, uh, you know, a refill for your bombs. But 
You always want to get the stone beak if you need help. I'm only getting it because I'm 100%ing the game, but I I'm never going to use it. I wish there was, uh, you know, more of a purpose, but, like, they felt the need to put in every single dungeon. And truly, some dungeons you could just kind of walk through without even thinking about asking a single owl. But I guess for those who need it, it's there. But okay. Whoa. Gotta avoid that. So, okay, now we can take on the mini boss. And to do so, we just have to make our way around. I don't think I need to do this. Okay, we got a fairy. Which, see, which side is the mini boss gonna be at? It's actually, yeah, okay, both work. So, let's just head in from here. I never went in from this. Oh, no, I guess you have to only go in from this side. So, there we go. Yeah, we got some Goma spiders or crabs. Um, not a fan of these at all. So, I believe you can use the hook shot or... You can use uh, the bow and arrow. Actually, I don't know if you... Does the hook, the hook shot must work. Because, let's say you didn't have the bow and arrow. What would you do? And, it, wow, you kept your eye closed. Okay. There you go. You can see it open. Yeah, it works. And then you can hit it more. So, if anything, the the bow is probably worse if you have a powered up sword. So, you can tell when they twitch their eyes that they're going to open them. So, here we know. If we hit him, I'll get hit in return. I don't care. Faster way to kill him. I wonder how long it would take for the bow to kill this enemy. Ah, okay. Huh, you know what? I'm gonna try something. This 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 might be an interesting method to do it. Instead of hitting him with my sword, let's see how much damage the bow does. Wait, it does barely anything. I'm like rapid fire shooting and it's doing nothing, but okay. Uh, let's switch back, because it actually feels really weird not to have my rocks feather out. Because Link can always jump when I'm playing this game, but okay. Perfect. We were, him, we were able to hit him before he was able to hit us for once. And I believe since this mini boss gives you the portal, it must give you, yes, a fairy. So there you go. That's why it feels like more of the mini boss of the dungeon, unlike the Stalfos, because it gives you the portal, which is usually what the reward is after taking on uh, the thing. But okay, so let me just check. I want to get that chest, like I said. Uh, it is 100%, so. Might as well just quickly grab it. I just believe I just need to push this or this. This one, yeah, okay, good. And then we could just kind of head through here or the other way. It doesn't necessarily matter. I guess you have to head through here because that one you can't pull down the bridge. But, okay. Here you need the hook shot to quickly hook shot across this section. And then, voila, we got the chest. Yeah, I didn't want to let this chest go without picking it up because you can't actually progress with that. Again, you actually need a small key for this. So it's perfect. Uh, I guess in reality the only additional chests that aren't necessary were those uh, two 50 rupee ones that were just next to each other. It was just a nice reward altogether. But okay, now small key, nightmare key in hand. We're pretty much ready for the boss of this dungeon. And again, as I mentioned, I'm rather curious to see how fierce this boss is going to look. Well, I don't feel like Master Stealthless was that scary. I feel like they did it justice for this game's graphics. So I have no idea how it's going to look like in this game. Um, but as you can see, wow, it looked like Bowser's head. It looked like a stone version of Bowser's head in the original game. But in this game, it's more so maybe referencing the upcoming boss. Maybe it was supposed to in the original game. I don't know. But look at that. It actually has a hookshot spot inside, like a cutout for it. So if you couldn't tell, yeah, that's all you need to do. And now it's time to make our way to the final stretch of this dungeon. So we just open up this. I like how the locked door is just there, forcing you to, to deal with it when it seems so unnecessary. But there we go. And oh, there's another way to get here, interestingly enough. But it would have just blocked you? Huh. Um, actually, let me just look. Yeah, all of this seems to exist within the dungeon that isn't necessary. Oh, you know, these are the rooms I, I believe I ignored. Uh, regardless, it doesn't matter. It, it, we have the boss, we have everything as the compass is showing. We got everything we need to get. So, let's just go ahead and enter the boss door and see what awaits. So, so you're an outsider come to wake up the wind fish. Uh, I shall eat you, okay. And uh, the, his dialogue really makes sense as look how terrifying this thing is. Oh, God. It looks pretty nasty still. It opens up four sides. And it actually kind of looks like a chain chomp that is has two sides of the same face. Okay, whatever. Either way, I hate this music because it reminds me of how annoying this boss is. So you want to pull him. Wait, what? I didn't pull him in time. Okay, whatever. It's fine. 
I'm gonna pick a side. And you wanna kinda wanna play jump rope if you can. Okay, there we go. Pull him, and usually there would have been a heart where the original game had it to like, indicate what you need to hit. But in this game, it's all pink. So you can tell that's its weak point. But okay, there we go. We wanna play jump rope like this. And it gives you a much uh, bigger opportunity to hookshot it, which is nice. Because I'll tell you, that was something that wasn't in the original game. So in reality, this boss is a bit easier. I think it would have been cool, though, as you pull him for uh, this tail to retract. Because, I mean, this tail is a part of the boss. So can you please come to one of these sides? Perfect. All right. Oh, it does, actually. Never mind. I never paid attention to that because I was so busy. But now I did. And oh, the power of the red tunic, my friends. So... You don't seem to know what kind of island this is. What a fool. Eventually, we're, we're starting to piece together the, the whole game story. This game is bizarre. Link woke up on a random island that has so much problems to it and a lot of unsolved mysteries. But eventually, most of it will be solved. But let's pick up our heart container. And let's go ahead and just continue on to... Oh yeah, check it out, the next instrument of the sirens. You got the wind marimba! Alright, that was really short. It, it didn't really have much, because I guess it's just like a, a piece of the background of the melody that we're going to be learning eventually, but SHRINE! The island secret in the shrine, the island secret in the shrine, okay. Whatever that means, I feel like the owl will add to it. No! For once the owl didn't come to annoy us, so nice! I guess we'll end off the episode here of Link's Awakening. Next time we're going to check out whatever shrine in the island secret to the shrine. But uh, that about does it for the catfish's moss. So, thank you all so much for watching. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye!